Hi and welcome to episode 138 of the show they said shouldn't happen or was it wouldn't happen or couldn't happen, any combination, but we're here to prove them all wrong. Uh, this is the Comedy Slab. I'm Adrian Lacey in the southeast of England and uh, Esquire O'Connor, Shane O'Connor is in the Midlands. It's the show they said. Has it happened yet? <laughs> um, okay, be that as it may. Um, You've got, uh, oh, we're going to be uh, putting the men from the ministry in uh, a 50 plus year old uh, Radio 4 show on the slab of is it shame or fame in a little while. A um, bit of comedy news in just a moment. Just before that, you're, um, you're very long faced because your team have just conceded. Can, can you concede drawing? Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, they have really. I mean, well, they've just mm. conceded a goal in the last minute. Of mm. uh, the Careless. four minutes, four minutes of uh, of extra time. So yeah, that's um, oh, it's you know, I'm not in the best of moods. I'll be honest with you, um, <laughs> and I hate to say that to you because you're the one who's accommodated me and waited until I've you know we've kind of pushed it back ninety minutes, haven't we, more or less, in order to. But, but that's yeah, this has happened before though, and and you we you lost virtually last time blame you let me. me. Exactly. <laughs> so you're virtually blaming me for your team's defeat. We are talking about Aston Villa. Of course, if you're a Newcastle fan, as we speak, uh, you'll be delighted that uh, they won, or at least uh, drew, I should say. Like a window. Very, very good impersonation. It's like three You've points. Obviously, put for a lot of time. Where they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, anyway, should we draw a veil yeah. over that? Because you're just going to get me more mean and moody than I already am. Which, well, that seems virtually impossible. But yeah, so some comedy news. Something about um, something that's got uncovered. Oh, matron. That was previously this, covered up. I don't know if you, I think we both spotted this, but but my mm. re- I don't know if your reaction was the same as mine. Let me run you th- run you through through how I thought about it. I saw the headline, it said Miranda Hart, Greg Davies and Alice Lowe. I'm not sure who Alice Lowe is. Do you know Alice Lowe? Is that a name that's familiar to you? I recognise the name, but if you keep talking long enough, could you just talk slowly so I can look around? <laughs> uh, Miranda Hart, Greg Davies and Alice Lowe. BBC sketch pilot has been uncovered that was made for BBC Three back in 2007. Do you remember Alice Lowe? Uh, I do. She was in Black Mirror, Bandersnatch, and um, we should recognise her from Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. We were referencing it only last week in connection with Back because of the father being played by the the lead in that. Mm. Um, And she was Madeline Wool stroke Liz Asher in Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, if that... I do recognise, yeah, I do recognise her now. She was, she was the one. Um, she wore a white coat in the uh, laboratory, I think, of the episode we slapped. Anyway, um, mm. and I thought, oh, that's nice for comedy fans, I suppose, um, in a way. But then I kind of think, I wonder what Miranda Hart and Greg Davis and Alice Lowe think of this. That this this pilot, which might, I mean, it might be, I don't know, might not be their finest work, has been uncovered. The, the, sorry, mm. I was going to say, there's, there's this thing on the internet, the right to be forgotten. Does that stretch to comedy? <laughs> <laughs> too good to be forgotten. Um, too good to be remembered. Well, you do wonder, there must be a reason why it was covered up in the first place. And if it was stunningly, jaw-droppingly good, I mean, I'm making the fatal assumption uh, that commissioners know what they're doing. But uh, if it was jaw-droppingly good, you'd have thought it would have got a commission. Um but it has got one unique feature. Did you mention the fact it's called Hush and it's yeah. dialogue free? Yeah. Now, I mean, if it had been a radio show, I think that would have been even more problematic. But <laughs> but it's it's never going to be a big ratings winner, is it? Something with no dialogue in whatsoever. No. I say that, and then people writing in saying, "Well, what about Mister Bean?" Although although it's interesting, so and again, and, and this kind of again, this is um, this isn't me watching. This is my son. But there's a Mister Bean cartoon. Um, mm. Which is which is made by um, uh, Talkback Thames, um, which features the voice of Rowan Atkinson and Robin Driscoll and a few mm. others um, who were involved in you know the the, the live action Mister Bean, and they they put dialogue in that, so that's interesting for kids. You would think that they wouldn't need to, would you? Because you know, in the good old tradition of silent movies or silent comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit be a shame that they're never exposed to that. And the other thing, of course, was it made it so international easily. I mean, you can always have subtitles or revoicings, but there's something pure about it. Is, um, it, is this a bit gimmicky, do you think? Is it, is it a bit on a level with, you know, let's make a drama, but all the sets need to be made a trifle? Is it that kind of thing, do you think? Or, 
Or, or I'd watch it? that. <laughs> well, it was called Crossroads, wasn't it? <laughs> was that Jelly? Yeah. But Jelly is part of Trifle. Yeah. Well, apparently. I apparently, misheard you. I'm a trifle deaf. The viewing figures yeah. were in the hundreds of thousands. Hundreds and thousands. Did you get it, Trifle? Hundreds oh, of thousands. Oh, all right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for helping it, the gag home. Just drag that one <laughs> across the It needed all the help line. we could yeah. get. <laughs> yes. Is, so is what, it, are we, what are we saying? This is going to be shown now. Well, it's, or they're just online. I think it's well. It's been it's been well because like BBC Three are flip flopping backwards and forwards, aren't they? They're, one minute they're online, now they're going to be a proper television station again. Um, and I, I mm. wonder whether this is all part of, you know, the, I think it's on YouTube, and that's it's it's been uncovered. I wonder whether it's been uncovered by um, the um, the press department. Um, oh look what we found to coincide <laughs> with the launch of BBC Three going back onto uh, being a real TV station. Do you know, I don't know. Really? I, I mean, I don't know, yeah. but I mean, I just do wonder. Um, you know, with, with the likes of Greg Davies, but then I don't know if you've ever seen We Are Clang, um, which was I may have seen one. Yeah, you know. So he's ov- he's obviously not he's not a man who is frightened to push the barriers of comedic tolerance. Shall we say? <laughs> Sounds like unusually for you, you might be choosing your words carefully. He's a change. big lad. He's a big lad, Greg. He's he's, he's about yeah, six he's, foot yeah, four, and do you know what I mean? You should get him playing for uh, do, do some tryouts for for the Villa. He, he would be good as a as a central yeah. defender. I would have thought goalie. Next goalie, time. I would have thought. No, well, no we got we got a great football. goalkeeper, but it's just uh, um, yeah, just can't score. No, we can't. That's end, exactly right? what it is. That is exactly the problem. That's for a man it's who very hasn't, rare to find a goalie who scores. Through, <laughs> for a man who hasn't sat through a minute of a football match all season, <laughs> I'm all a, there, aren't I? That's one hell of an astute observation you've just made there. You should get yourself a job, mate. I'll get straight over He's to BBC. Not scored sports. all season. <laughs> I'd sack him. Why? Why you're so you know willing to uh, put put the arms of love around him? I really, I'm I'm baffled. Yeah. Um, yeah right. Anyway, shall we? Should we put a certain wireless radio, steam radio show on the uh, on the slab? Yes. Um, we had finished that thought, hadn't we? So it's out there on YouTube. If you just search for Hush, Greg Davis, BBC Three, I'm sure you'll find it somehow. Uh, and thanks to um, the wonderful comedy website, just comedy.co.uk. Um, right, fact, Men you, from the Ministry. If you go to their website, um, there's a, you mm. can, there's a you can click on it from there as well. So Wow. It's almost like they've thought it through. The men from the ministry. Do you have any recollections hearing it in the past, perhaps when it went out? Because it it, uh, it was running uh, from 62 to 77. So I'm sure some of it overlapped with your years. Something. I, I, I would have, this would have gone out on a Sunday, wouldn't it? I, that's not my recollection. I thought it went out in the week, but it may have moved around different series. Okay, I would have said this goes out on a Sunday lunchtime and it takes me back to growing up in Birmingham and the old mm. radiogram that we used to have. Oh, I mean, actually, uh, just on that, it could have been repeated, couldn't it? And that was the age of repeats uh, even more than now. Well, I mean, say, yes. saying repeated, I mean, it had quite a few <laughs> few episodes, didn't it? I mean, it was it ran for quite, quite a time, really. Um, 145 episodes in the UK. Yeah, that's not uh, it's not a grubby innings. No, but um, but were you saying you, you might have had a recollection of listening uh, Sunday lunch times? I, I did. Sure. I, I'm sure there was a Sunday lunchtime slot, and I'm thinking I'm I'm kind of getting this and uh, the Clitheroe Kid, and I remember that on a Sunday lunchtime. But uh, that I think was revived for the BBC's um, quick quick Quintin Quintina fiftieth anniversary. Right. Called. Right. Okay. And it all gets a bit. It all gets a bit hazy and a bit foggy. But yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like I've heard episodes go out live, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't stake my reputation, such as it is, on it. <laughs> I would have thought with your reputation, you could stake it on anything. True. And you're not going to lose out. True. Frankly, um, I could put my but, reputation on a steak and kidney pudding. To be honest with you, but yeah, you're right. Yes. Um, a little bit of. Fry and Bentos. No, that doesn't work. Uh, I'll edit that out later. No, no, don't patronise me with laughter. It really, really didn't deserve it. I thought it was quite good, a bit of Fry and Bentos. <laughs> for me, for me. Okay, well, so be it. Um, modern Bentos. We'll have to do that one week. Um, now, you immediately said, though, when I mentioned that we were putting, because uh, we, uh, if you're new to the show, a special welcome to you, do subscribe and all of that. We'll give you one or two other steers 
and encouragements later on. But um, uh, we take it in turns to choose a comedy for each other and indeed for you, dear listener. And uh, it was my turn at the end of last week's show to set the homework. And no sooner had I mentioned the title of the show, The Men from the Ministry, mm. you said, oh, is that Derek Guyler? So you're obviously... Uh, uh, reasonably across it enough to know the uh, one of the starring actors. Well, uh, until until I looked it up and then I realised that I was I was joining it along the path, wasn't I? Because he wasn't he wasn't the original star, was he? No, he he was a Johnny come lately in 1966, I think. Mr. Yeah, Geiler. the year I was I born, agree. actually. So, do you know then for a trivia point? Um, who preceded him then? I do. But I feel guilty taking the trivia prob- point because I, I looked it up. <laughs> so. But if you can remember it, I, you'll have to trust me, dear listener, whether he looks at the screen at this point. But if you can say it staring into the camera, assuming you haven't got some kind of auto cue device in front of the lens, yes. um, what's the name of the actor? It was, um, it was Wilfred Hyde White. Wasn't he a Doctor Who? Um, English no. character, actor, blah, blah, no, blah. You've got the right name. He was in the William, film version of the musical My Fair Lady, Colonel William, Pickering. William Hartnell, I'm thinking of, aren't I? Yeah, no, we're not Wilfred Hartnell. You are. Yeah. You're all Hartnell. Yeah. Um, okay. And Roy Detrice played the undersecretary, who's the sort of big boss within the limited confines of this part of the civil service. I should say it is all about... The men from a sort of vague ministry of uh, is it information, it's something like that, isn't it? Or it's not the Department of Administrative Affairs, which was um, in. Uh, yes, Minister. No, no. Well, wasn't I? Well, there've been a number of series, as we're about to find out, or as we recall, um, in the loop, the thick of it. Sorry, I have to go backwards from the film uh, in the loop, and the thick of it inspired that. Wasn't that that was oh that was the Department of Social Affairs DOSA. What what was what was the? Uh, I wasn't yes, sure if, it, if the internet had frozen or you were thinking then, just staring, sat sitting, staring at me. No, this is the speed what that was... I move at normally. I don't, I don't <laughs> move much quicker than this. Um, yeah, no. I, the question. I, I I thought the the Department of Administrative Affairs was was Jim Hacker's mob, wasn't it? Surely. I think you're right. It's the Department of Social Affairs Social was affairs, uh, the yeah. thick of it. It's all, but I mean, you, you you get the sense. What it's all about is that there's nothing tangible produced by the department. Yeah, and that is the running gag through all of these. Um, is this, however, being from 1970, this particular edition, which I should say is called um, Bill Stickers is Innocent. I remember that correctly, haven't I? I never have the right page in front of me. Right, um, yeah. I'm sure it is, and you might even prompt me. Was it Siri? Series three, episode five, or was that last week's show we were slapping? It, anyway, you'll find it. It was uh, series six, episode 14, believe it or not. Right. In which case, ignore what I just said about another series. I think that was last week's slabbery. Um, okay, but you will find it as we speak for, well, just uh, two or three weeks as we're recording on um, BBC Sounds. Um, but it will come round again. And again, and do, again, I'm you, quite sure. Do you want a, a trivia point then? Is it, is it, you can play along at home when you're listening to the podcast as well. Here's, a, <laughs> here's another trivia point for you. Yeah, do. Roy, do. Roy Detrice, why, why wouldn't he be uh, happy? Some mothers do have them. Oh, all right, no. let's forget that is one that then, the... yeah. Right, next. <laughs> is that the question? Yeah, it was why wouldn't he is be it? happy with his um, fictional son-in-law? Oh, uh, yes, because he made off with his daughter, um, Michelle Detrice. Michelle Detrice was Frank Spencer's wife, yeah, Betty. Yeah. Ooh, Betty. Anyway. Right. Now, is it showing its age? This is 50-plus uh, years old, this uh, particular episode. Yeah, well, I think... Uh, do you know what? This is the one I, that, that is the one question that I've wrestled with with the entire notes and critique of this. Is, 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 it, is it its age, or is it just the kind of thing that it was at the time? And I and I don't think it's maybe showing its age so much as it's just a gentle comedy at the time, maybe. And and it's very easy if they've written something that is very, I'll use that word again, gentle, to then assume, oh, this hasn't mm. aged very well. Uh, yes. I mean, you know, we could name uh, comedies today which are quite gentle, like the Detectorists, 
is gentle, so it doesn't have to be associated with some supposedly way of time when everything was gentler. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not um, saying that it's it's a bad thing. You know, I'm not. I'm not criticising it for no, being no, that. No, no, no. But, uh, but I'm just saying it's easy to pick that up and think, oh, that's really aged quite badly. When in actual fact, at the time, you would go, well, this isn't cutting edge at the time. Mm. Well, I'm going to dissect it a bit more on the on the old marble slab. Um, well, we'd, we'd do it together, of course. But I don't want to give, don't want to play all my cards up front, mixing all my metaphors, uh, not necessarily in the right order. But um, can I just ask one more question, which you can decline to answer if it gives away too much at this stage, because we like a sense of jeopardy, jeopardy dog. Um, did you have a? Did your stomach sink as I set the homework? Or did you look forward to listening to it? Or is uh, is neither extreme? I think look true. forward to it out of anything, really. And and I was quite intrigued mm. as to why you'd chosen it because, um, I think it's 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 quite a a difficult one because of its age to critique, isn't it? You know. And I kind of I kind of looked at it and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Why has he done that? But yeah, I think probably look forward to it because I'd got some kind of vague recollection of it. Well, let's hear the uh, first of two audio clips and see see where each of us uh, is with it. Um, how to set the scene. So you've only got... Um, it's quite a small cast, really, isn't it? Um, so we talked about Wilfred Hyde-White was the original actor. Then Derek Guiler came in, um, referred to as one. But actually, did, did you know that? I mean, they didn't refer to each other. It was just one and two. That sounded yeah. a bit James Bondy and like Q and all of that. I think they didn't call each other that, did they? Yeah, they did. And throughout these, it, it, really? you, you had to be really quick to catch it. I can understand why you'd you'd think that they didn't, because it, it it almost sounded like he was saying, um, he was referring to himself as one, because they're quite posh as well. Um, but one right. and, one and two, yeah, they they did refer to themselves as one and two, number one and number two, and I think that, that is a throwback from. Um, military, isn't it? It's, isn't it particularly a naval? Okay, number one. Okay, number two. And I think right. because a lot of ex-military went into the civil service, I think you know it, it, it sort of belied the pecking order in which they were considered. Um, and so, because obviously right. D- Derek Guiler's character, he's he's the guy in charge. And it also, which is what I quite like, and you see this in Yes Ministry, it also cuts out the person who's really supposed to be in charge, which is the minister. <laughs> That's quite handy, isn't it? Yeah. It, you know what I mean? It's quite, it's quite passive aggressive, isn't it? In a way, you know, he, he's number one, not not. I mean, they wouldn't do it in front of him, but he's number one, not you. Which but, I thought was. But quite... the under secretary is the civil service boss. Even he doesn't feature in that particular pecking order. No. It just shows how small minded it is. It's just this little office. Anyway, well, what they've got is a little animal in the office. Believe it or believe it not, and we'll, we'll talk about credibility a bit later on, and. Um, uh, the first voice you hear, I think, is of two, otherwise known as, well, the character name is Richard Lamb. Uh, the actor, in fact, is a Richard as well, as Richard Murdoch uh, playing uh, Richard Lamb. And uh, and then the other voice you hear in this sequence is the uh, secretary, uh, brackets female, Mildred Murfin, I think that is. Okay, enjoy and see uh, if you think this has aged well over the last half century. He doesn't like pets in offices. Yes, yeah, Sir Gregory hates all animals, doesn't he? Wasn't there something about a dog biting him outside Parliament? Yes, big Alsatian it was. They're very intelligent animals. <laughs> it chased Sir Gregory down Whitehall and caught him by the commons. <laughs> for taking in a stray cat. You bet he would. He's in a specially nasty mood lately. Last week he told me to shut up before I'd even opened my mouth. Yeah, and yesterday he complained about me miniskirt. Said he'd take it up at the highest level. <laughs> I think Cynthia's still hungry. I'll give her some more smoked salmon. Oh, she's got it all over her. What a greasy mess. She'd better have a bath. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Cats hate water. This one doesn't, Mildred. Oh, well, I'll take her down the washroom and wipe her face and paws. All right. I want to polish up my poem for the staff magazine. Do you get paid for it? No, it's what's called free verse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, come on, Cynthia. Auntie Mildred make you a nice, clean pussy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's um, Are You Being Served there, isn't it? I don't know whether I'm just... Because I'm watching that at the moment. Mrs Slocum... <laughs> 
and a nice clean Half pussy. Half an inch away from her, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and not I mean, to titter over that. That was the innocence of the audience, perhaps. Very gentle, mm-hmm. though, isn't it, really? And, and he, like when he said the dog, you know, he bit him, he bit him by the commons, you think, you know... <laughs> Nowadays, it's like he beat him up. He bit him up Needless Alley or something like. That. You know what I mean? It's, it, <laughs> you, they could have gone a lot more risque, couldn't they? Anyway, do you want a headline um, for my? I uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, I, I just simply said as headline, middle of the road politics. That's okay. Middle of the road. Middle of the road politics, politics on the laser scoreboard. <laughs> Okay, does that mean your reaction was middle of the road likewise, neither hot nor cold? Yeah, it's just gentle, isn't it? It's just, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not offensive. I mean, it's not rip-roaringly funny. I mean, I suppose, you know, you could argue and say, well, they were different times, they were different gags. I was just trying to think what would be running around the same time as this, and you know, and you think you've got things like Steptoe and Son, very clever mm. writing, very, very you know, I mean, even the plot to this is very, it's very linear, isn't it? Very simplistic. Um, yes. Gentle, easy. I mean, are there, are there not good words to describe a comedy program? Are they really? If you think, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, well, I thought, I thought you were saying it wasn't of itself a criticism to say something's gentle. I, I, I cited the case of detectorists, which I find too gentle and, uh, anyway, we have slabbed that, but I don't want to go down that particular mm. route. I, I don't, yeah, I mean, it, it's easy to criticise something for that, but then, but then, you know, that comes back to that whole thing again of that's it's supposed to be funny and it's supposed to be hilarious, and and if it isn't, then is it isn't it failing? I suppose maybe we, we've been too easy going on it. Well, I mean, what about you? Did you did you you must have similar feelings I, I, in terms of. It's it's veracity in in terms of its comedic content. I mean, it's it's they weren't cracking gags, were there? In there, really? Um, no, this sort of uh, well, one or two, you know, laugh first, feel guilty later, like the um, take up the mini skirt to the at the highest level. The highest level, <laughs> yeah. It's just so ooh, uh, misses end of the pier. Um, but I, I, you know that that could cause offence. Um, I just yeah I. I had a very different reaction, actually, from the first listen to the second listen. The first listen, I, I, after that, I was ready to skewer it, actually, quite meanly. Right. <laughs> and so just this is terrible. You've got a... Uh, the only woman is in a very uh, sub- subservient position. Sounds like a posh actress so- trying to sound not so posh. A bit Ealing comedy. Ooh, I can drop my H's in the all. Um and, and so on and so forth. But then I thought, well, you have got to, you've certainly got to make some allowances for the time because women were largely in secretarial roles. A lot of women were, and a lot of women were in those roles because they were limited at what else they could do, or were allowed to do, I meant to say. Um, and uh, was the civil service bumbling? Well, that's a bit of a cheap shot, but we seem to like culturally... Uh, that kind of comedy to skewer, don't we? Those kind of characters. I mean, uh, on 4 Extra, which played this out, which is uh, how we've been listening via the BBC website, it was, uh, and that was the end of that series, next week, Dad's Army. And you think, oh, right, this is the ho- hopeless buffoon slot on Radio 4 Extra. Yeah. But, you know, they'd never be short of anything to fill it, would they? We, we just te- seem to be a culture that enjoys that, or at least the comedy commissioners think we do yeah i mean um, I, you know you and i disagree about about this all the while don't we about this you know i mean this this idea of um you, you've said before oh there's not enough women in it or you know no women writers or what i don't you know whatever and i and i don't mm. i i've i've always i've kind of lived and felt that i've lived and been brought up in a meritocracy but obviously that's not the case anymore it's all it's all about you know identity now and I personally think that the world now is just mental. I think it really is, and I probably can't even say that because I have to say, you know, I'm being unkind to somebody with mental illness, which I'm not, and it's just ridiculous. We're just at a ridiculous level now that, you know, we're, we're, we're even seriously contemplating in Wales having a curfew for men because 40 women have been murdered 
by men. What nobody's telling anybody, by the way, about that story is that the vast majority were related to the people that they killed. But it doesn't fit the narrative, you see, and this is the thing they want to see. There's men prowling on the streets, and I just I just think we've gone mad as a country, and it's the world is like this as well, really. And to me, this this has um, has an innocence about it, in a way, that... that it kind of, and you're right. It reflects it reflects that time, doesn't it? And you can't, mm. you can't, you can't be revisionist about history. You can't, you, well, you can. I mean, people are doing it. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to rewrite the history pages almost before the ink's dried on them. And I, I just think it's just such an it, an awful and dangerous thing to do. But well, to- the, the old saying is history is written by the winners. So sometimes it's interesting to hear from the people who aren't the winners. Mm. Um, but we're well. I don't think the game's over. Let's, let's let's see who the winners are because I don't think I don't think well, it's over by a long stretch. But I, well, hopefully the planet's not over for um, the foreseeable. But <sighs> the point is, I I I um I, I couldn't uh, I could probably disagree more if I tried. But but I I just see this as um and, and particularly that less forgiving first listen I did of this. I thought um. Gosh, this is this is a sign of a very creaky old England, uh, which uh, and and the comedy culture is just is. Uh, let me just finish this sentence. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Uh, the com- the comedy culture is is drinking from a very very shallow gene pool. Uh, it, it, it for me, and um, as I say, I had a slightly kinder feel about it. I felt more affection towards it the second time. But, you know, jobs were meted out in those days with who you drank with at the Coach and Horses in Soho or at, uh, uh, what is it, the George round the corner from Broadcasting House. But we haven't, we haven't moved on from that, have we? Because now jobs are meted out, depending on whether what your backstory is and whether you've got certain genitalia or certain skin pigmentation or certain sexual preferences. And so No, I just, I just think that's changed, just, but we're just doing it on a different no, menu. No, well... Yeah, but you would have had no chance of... Uh, imagine a, a black woman trying to write a sitcom in 1970 but, but, and get it heard by the old guard of the, the, the old Oxbridge set at the BBC. But the interesting thing is, you're saying about this This you know, points to a lot... I, I was never part of that life any more than I'm going to be part of the... I'm the one that's been missed out on, on both of these. Where, where the in-between is, like the good is. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? Is that you can't replace one set of bigotry with another because people still get left behind. I, and you say about about you know this this points to an England. I I never knew this England. I only knew it in comedy, and I, and you know I was never part of that. I never got I never left you know the right school and got a job in the civil service. I did briefly work for the civil service, but I don't like to talk so did about I. it. Did you? Which which, <laughs> which branch did you work for? Uh, well, hilariously, we called it the Department of Enjoyment. Uh, it was, of course, the Department of Employment. Oh, did you? Oh, right. at, uh, at, at Watford, but I, you know, I was never a uh, Sir Humphrey. I was uh, a grubby little um, casual, as we were unflatteringly known. That's what and I, that was I, our attitude as well. Yeah, you I call was casual a, long enough, you end up with that attitude to your work. Don't I was, you? I was, I, was, I thought I had to. That's a, there was a reference to how I had to dress. Oh, I didn't know. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I was at, it. I was at the valuation office for a for a brief period of time until the they, department of valuation until they until they realised who I was and threw me out. Yeah, um, they, they realised you had no value whatsoever. But it, I was but, head of postcodes at one point. I'll have you know. But but it's interesting, isn't but, it? This whole thing is is like I say, is, is like you're right. It's it's a world gone by for some, but I hmm. would suggest for the very few. And and it wasn't a world that I knew or inhabited. And I guess it wasn't a world that you knew. No, it's a point we might we might actually dangerously meet in the middle here because yes, when I hear, uh, uh, yeah, I mean I've talked about before about feeling privileged, not in the way of being on the playing fields of Eton. That was never an option for me. Mm. It's a comprehensive school in Watford, but uh, but I feel privileged uh, in many ways, other ways, like being brought up in a musical family, things like that. I really value, and also knowing the value of money and, and yet being lucky enough not to run out of it is quite a big deal. Mm. Um, not feeling wealthy, uh, but but uh, also not feeling desperately poor. So um, uh, I suppose in that sense, I'm an in-betweeny. Maybe like you, maybe not. Yeah. Shall we have another clip then? I, I think it's high time, yeah. 
Now, this is where we hear the, the boss, although, of course, he's not the boss's boss. He's still uh, subservient to the politician, but he is the undersecretary we've referred to, Sir Gregory Pitkin, uh, or just often referred to as Sir Gregory. Uh, as we were saying, originally played by Roy Detrice, uh, here, and this is a lovely crusty voice, but he, it's it's like Tom Jones. It's always on at full pelt. Um, uh, it's played by uh, Ronald Badley. And um, this is him setting out the, the government plan. Basically, he's looking for preferment and promotion the whole time. And um, there's this uh, Meister plan, which uh, is being hatched. Uh, something that this particular department is going to take over responsibility for. This will not be commercial nonsense. It will be vital government propaganda. If you drink, don't drive. Invest in national savings. Go to work on an egg. Stuff like that. Yes, I see, Sir Gregory. Before, these posters came from different ministries, transport, health and so on. Now, it's all in our hands. You'll arrange printing, choose suitable sites, etc., etc. Details in this file. Thank you, Sir Gregory. Now, I want no slip-ups on this job. No, no. Then, for heaven's sake, tidy up your office. I've never seen such a mess. Oh. A ukulele in the in-tray? Uh, we, we, we never play it. <laughs> you surprise me. A rock cake and a, and a pair of sandals in the out-tray? Oh. Very... And, and what's that outside on the window ledge? Uh, let's see. Uh, frozen peas, milk and a yoghurt. Is that usual, may I ask? It, not the yoghurt, no. <laughs> it's special flavour of the month. Shrimp and chocolate. <laughs> Any food I buy, I put out there to keep cool. Well, get it in at once. Oh. This is an office, not a supermarket. Yes. And get on with that poster job. Now! Do you know, it does have its moments as well, doesn't it? I mean, there are, you know, we were having mm. a titter there. I mean, you kind of think... It, maybe you kind of get all het up in the bubble of when it when it's from and the subject mm. matter and you kind of think oh actually no that there are you know communally when you listen to it there, there are moments in there that you quite like interesting you're talking about ronald badley did you know he he was uh he was ex-archers he was in the archers in the 1950s um oh, right. played the part of the squire which you can you can you can imagine him can't you he's uh, the squire of um was it borchester i can't remember what the the village is in there Right. I'm yeah. sure that voice has squared many a, a character. Yeah, but... Um, <laughs> I think we'll but leave now, it there. I mean, you know, in terms of a cast and how they work together and the and the timing, the comedic timing of that, I mean, it's it's quite tight, isn't it, for, for its age? It's quite... Mm. It, you know, it does kind of work, really. Although I did, and I don't know yeah. whether you found this, did you, did you find it a very long half hour? Well, it, it was a full half hour, which... Uh, uh, you know, commercial TV, for instance, obviously, because of the commercials, is, is never half an hour. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, uh, first time through, um, let's just say I didn't quite make it to the end. <laughs> so I had to come back uh, for more. But yeah, yeah, a, a real half hour sounds very long. And uh, I, I was reading actually somewhere they did uh, a shorter version. This was sold around the world, wasn't it? Well, a few, a few countries. I mean, what is really hilarious is there's a Finnish version and a Swedish version. Um and yeah, I was reading that one of them was shortened, I think possibly to make way for um, uh, commercial breaks or something else uh, abroad, but but not in the UK. Oh, oh, this was, they were they were licensed, weren't they, by the BBC Transcription Service, <laughs> which, I, which which itself sounds ancient. Doesn't it, it does, doesn't it? Really, it sounds like a throwback from a throwback. But the interesting thing that I mm. found out about it as a result of that, they, one of the, one of the, you write all the versions you mentioned, but they licensed it in South Africa. Uh, to mm. a, to a, an organisation called Springbok Radio, and they actually produced nine hundred episodes of this. Nine hundred, I missed that. Now, considering we made one hundred and forty five in the UK, I mean, they were going somewhere. They were gung ho for this stuff. They were. I've never heard of uh, any series running to nine hundred episodes, not even in the states. Interesting thing as well. Did you notice <clears throat> that they did? Um, they kind of had guest stars, or they had, you know, sort of guest people in there. Clive Dunn appeared in an episode. Uh, Pat, mm. Pat Coombs, Warren Mitchell, Bill Pertwee, um, and Kenneth Horne and Sam Costa yeah. were also in there. All big names of their respective times, weren't they? Yeah, and I wonder whether it was whether it was to beef it up a bit, or whether it was to, you know, just because they were known 
voices to you know to do well, they couldn't get them to write them in and do a part i don't know doesn't just never say that does no, it, it? Well, it just it, well it can lift any long-running series can't it to have a um a, a, a new i was going to say new face obviously new voice in this case one of the saddest things i i read was that um did you see they reworked previous plot lines just with changing the characters yeah. <laughs> i mean you know have a, talk about having a go at civil servants being lazy now, BBC workers aren't civil servants, but um, that doesn't sound like the strongest work ethic to me. Although, having said that, after you've after you've knocked out a hundred, you know, episodes, <laughs> maybe they're thinking, "Oh, well, who's going to who's going to know?" You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And and in those days, there wasn't the culture of being able to listen on catch up, of course. Exactly. So um, whether you could remember 1962's first editions when you were listening, fifteen years later. Um, that's probably a moot point. What about the cat, though? This is the the cat is the elephant in the room. Oh God! I thought of you instantly. <laughs> it reminds it reminds me of uh, Faulty Towers. The the rat was it the rat? Yeah, uh, yeah. In the uh... <laughs> just, just... <laughs> I mean, that's just hilarious for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, I mean, for some reason, visually, like with the rat in Faulty Towers, you can you can it becomes it becomes comedic, but but in in an audio well, setting i mean it's just awful isn't it it's like just get a sound effect well, a bit... i mean i know we go on about it. Oh, oh do they have sound effects why didn't they do you know real time why don't they do foley but oh, it's it's, mm. it's just somebody going meow is it? i mean they're practically going <laughs> meow aren't they well they don't even sound like they're going anything as authentic as meow no <laughs> Bless them, no. and and they appear to be uncredited, or I couldn't find the credit. Um, maybe they asked for their name to be removed. I was going to say they say I'll do it, but thought. don't ever tell anyone it was me. It's probably yeah. where they went with it. Yeah. It'd be hilarious if it turned out to be someone who subsequently became a massive star. Yeah, Peter Sellers. Or something. Yeah, uh, no, it's too late for him. But um, right, uh, any other business before we go into the um, treacherous territory of giving it marks out of five each? Only that one line took me right back to my school days when they said he hasn't smiled like that since he he caught you caught your tongue in the duplicating machine, and <laughs> that got one of the biggest laughs of the whole episode. And, and but and, and yeah, and not only was it was quite funny, but it did take me back because people would. I mean, nowadays maybe they'd think that you were talking about a photocopier, but of course those those big drum duplicating machines that they used to have. Do you remember those? You'd put like was a was that stencils. Yeah, you put like a master on, wouldn't you? Mm. And then they put ink in it, and then yeah. you'd like roll it like a big tombola, and it'd throw the pages out the bottom. But yeah, it took me right back to my school days. That the duplicating machine. Wow. <laughs> Oh, dear. oh well, uh, talking of going back, if we're if we're going down that particular um, historical hole, as it were, corset ads on the underground <laughs> get a mention. Yeah, I mean, it just seems incredible. But we are talking half a century ago. I read somewhere that that um, uh, I think in the in the mid mid to late seventies, they did an episode, and Sir Gregory was interviewed by the BBC Panorama program, and the interviewer was called Robin Gay. Instead of Robin Day, this this described as a yes. thin, thinly disguised parody, very thinly disguised. <laughs> oh, yes, we never we never saw through that. But then the term gay, I mean, uh, it it was still semi underground in 1970, meaning uh, a homosexual person. But again, you know, the the BBC was just up the road from the the main postcode to have swung in the 60s. Mm. Um, but it doesn't mean that the BBC, well, I don't know, bits of society move at different paces, don't they? Of course, yeah. I, I mean, um, in Birmingham, when I grew up, we had a, we used to have a, and they still sell them now, and they still call them the same thing, and if you remember them, they, they were like a um, a wooden device that was like a kind of self-contained shelving unit, and my mum was, was used to I'm wondering where this is going. No, she, was, she used to call it a gay box. Right. Well, where did that come from, or should I not ask? Well, it's, you know, like bright and gay. It was like to brighten a room up. You put this thing on the wall, and it was like like a right. miniature self-contained shelving unit, and, and you put little trinkets in it, you know, and it, to display them. I, I love the term trinkets. Um, well, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. Is it just a regional thing? Do you think? No, not at all. If you if you put it if you put gay box into Google, <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll leave it. You'd there. be amazed. At it what depends you what whether you've got safe search settings. <laughs> I mean, all I'm saying is don't do it at work. That's that's the best thing. No, uh, or if you, yeah, well, who's at work as we speak in lockdown? But if you um, 
Yes, if you do it at work, then you might find you haven't got any work to go to the following day. It, well, every, the answer to your question is everyone who doesn't work for the BBC is at work uh, during lockdown. But yes, carry on. Oh, yeah, OK. It's just lazy types like yeah. you. Right, well, with the clinking of the purple glass, mm. it uh, I call this meeting to order. And uh, who, Holt, who's going first with the scoring out of five? It's got to be my turn because I feel really neglected. I don't know whether I am or if I'm just being a little bit sensitive about it all. Uh, yeah, I'm fi- I'm always happy for you to go first. It gives me all thinking time. I, I'm, uh, I'm going to give it a straight two out of five. Um because okay. because of the fact that you know it 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 has a harmlessness to it. I mean, I can't say I didn't enjoy it, but but you know, I, it it was a it was a slow process, <laughs> a slow half hour. Yeah. I am a bit torn. Certainly, again, after the much uh, mentioned first listing, I was going to go for the meanest score I think I've ever given, which was going to be around a, a one and a half. Which, of course, you'll know. Being a blue meanie yourself, you're you're no stranger to giving that score. Brutal um, that that you are, brutal person. But um, for me, it's I'm going to give it two and a half. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I did come round quite a bit. It's still only half marks, which is meaner for me than it would be for you. But um, on the upside, yes, the the p- performances and great crusty old voices as appropriate, and. Um, but uh, a sort of feeling of fondness uh, for it that I just uh, I couldn't quite shake off. Um, I, I think some major credibility problems, like we, we were obliged to, uh, spoiler alert, but obliged to believe that num- number two, <laughs> Mr. Lamb, <laughs> um, uh, spent the entire night out, outside of the office window um, in a storm. Mm. Which strikes me as not that likely, but I suppose, you know, big big world of seven billion people, maybe it's happened somewhere at some stage. Yeah. At uh, four and a half out of ten, which is mm. which is not the worst that you'd ever get, but probably, you know. <laughs> not the best. Not the best. Okay, don't. Next week's homework then, please. Well, I thought, I don't know whether this is you making me feel guilty for making you watch a 40 minute of the other week. Mm. Um but and I don't know what you want to do here, but this is whether we do two episodes or if you just want to do one. But these are only fifteen minute episodes. How do you feel about that? I'd be churlish not to do two fifteen minutes, but then of course I don't get you back for the forty minute. Okay, all right then. I will do though one day. So we'll do okay. We'll do series one, episode one, and episode two of a Diane Morgan creation. Uh, do you do you familiar with the name Diane Morgan? The- I am. Would this be something that rhymes with clunkadunk? Um, no, well, no. That's really? that's what she's famous for, isn't it? Philomena Kunk mm. uh, on the um, oh Kunk, yeah. On the like, <laughs> or, sick, or yeah. Kunk over Britain was another one. I think she did as well, wasn't it? Which is kind of spin off. Uh, it was, yeah. 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 Uh, this no, this is she's she's done. She's gone for a, a character creation uh, comedy, um, fifteen minute episodes, and she's created a character called Mandy. And uh, and that's that's mm. the title of the show as well. It's a relatively new thing. I think it's it's probably um, aired in the last four or five months, something like that. But uh, still, uh, it's a BBC uh, program, and it's still on the iPlayer as we speak. So um, yeah, I thought we'd go for that then. Episode one and episode two of Diane Morgan's Mandy for uh, for next week. Okay, and no references to Peter Mandelson that we know of. No, not that I'm aware. Or Barry of. Manilow. No, no. <laughs> I will um, I will watch that with interest, as will uh, loads of our listeners, I'm sure, too. Um, and uh, hopefully they'll follow us on Twitter, which is at Comedy Slab. That's our handle. And uh, we're at Comedy Slab, likewise, on Facebook. Personal recommendations to friends, family, um, notable, uh, powerful figures like civil servants or, um, I don't know, religious figureheads who are in your life. Get them all on board with the Comedy Slab. Uh, we'll uh, appreciate a, a favourable mention from you to them, uh, whether it's in person or via a, a Zoom call or however you do it these days. Um, and uh, a generous star rating, lastly but not leastly, on uh, Apple, I, whatever it is, podcasts, a stroke iTunes. And um, the more generous, the better. I'm, I'm not allowed to steer towards a certain number of stars. Five. But um, we'll appreciate it, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll 
take what we're given, won't we? Really? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's the, my family motto. Um, <laughs> we and uh, my middle <laughs> name as well, which is a bit weird. Uh, and don't forget, yeah, if you've enjoyed yeah. this episode, why not peruse our extensive back catalogue? Why not wander? <laughs> why, not, why not wander down memory lane as far as the comedy slab is concerned? And tiptoe mm. through the veritable comedic <laughs> tulips. <laughs> of, Are you reading this off a script? No, no, no. I've lost your picture. No, now. no. Uh, the veritable comedic tulips of uh, of comedy programmes past, um, and you can do that on Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, YouTube. In fact, if you put comedy slab in all over the place um, to your internet, it will will probably pop up somewhere in some way, shape, or form uh, because um, that's the kind of guys we are. Uh, thank you very yes. much for your company, though. Until next time, as I've just realised, I've been googling terms like gay box and straight gristle. <laughs> um, <laughs> straight gristle. I'm heading off. <laughs> I, I, That's your homepage. I think it? no. I think it's a butchering. Butcher, I thought it was a butchery term. It just shows you how, how wrong you can be. Um, <laughs> you know I, I'm off to clear my internet search history, and uh, I'm off to feed uh, fish to a pussy. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum. Hopefully clean. <laughs> <laughs>